Hi, it's Alex. Today I want to talk about something a little bit more personal, but also with an eye towards sort of solving problems. I had a really hard time in the first few years out of college, and there were a lot of things that were hard for me. I was living on my own for the first time, and um, the search for employment and navigating the sort of pro professional world was a little tricky for me too. But both of those things, the sort of practicalities of living on my own and the job search, in the end worked out just fine. The thing that didn't fall into place for me, which was the source of a lot of suffering and hardship, was the so social isolation. I was not prepared for the degree of social isolation that I was going to experience when I graduated college and moved out on my own. And I think there are a lot of reasons why I wasn't prepared for it. Like when I think back about how I grew up, I grew up in this supportive home environment. My family ate dinner together every night, and we were pretty tight. We spent a lot of time together. And then, for years and years of my life, I would go to school every day, and all day long I was in this structured school environment. After I completed high school, I did take one year off before going to college, but then I went to college, and college was this super social environment. It was much more social than I'd ever experienced, because not only are you in class with people, but you're also living with people in a dorm. And I really loved it. I thrived in that sort of environment. And I stayed in the dorm the whole time in college. And then when I graduated college, I moved out on my own, and I was living in an apartment by myself. That's, I think, the first mistake. I think in hindsight, if I could go back, it might not have been the best choice to live by myself. And when I look at the people in my life, people didn't admonish me, they didn't warn me against doing that. And I think of all the advice people have given me, there have been a lot of things that people have told me, don't do this, don't do that, and those things turn out to be fine. But no one really said, don't live by yourself. Well, for me, it turned out to be a disaster, and I think that was the first problem. But the second thing, I just wasn't ready for the lack of structure. I had never experienced that before. Now, I moved to Cleveland Heights, Ohio. Cleveland, as a metro area, was pretty close to where I went to college, Oberlin, Ohio, and I really liked Cleveland as a city. And I moved to Cleveland Heights, and I actually I looked very carefully to find a neighborhood, and I found this neighborhood that looked really awesome. It was walkable, it had two independent supermarkets within walking distance, it had some coffee shops, it had several little bars, it had a gardening store, there was a bakery and cafe, and all of these things were like right out my back door. I could walk to all of them. I had this great apartment, like I was just so excited to be living on my own, I was like, this is great. And it wasn't long before I got a job, and okay, here's where things sort of went wrong. I think the first thing that I didn't anticipate, I had been around my peers in school, and I've always been a kind of eccentric person, so I don't necessarily relate to everyone super well all the time, but like, when I was in school, people were pretty social. And when I went into this, this first job out of school, it was in this suburban office park, and it, it just like, the thing that I was not expecting, not anticipating, is that people there were not really social. I just didn't get it. So there are all these people working at their cubicles, working at their desks, and it's like lunch rolls around, and there's this really great cafeteria in the basement, of this office building. And so I'm like, I'm going to go down here, and they had good food, and it was cheap, so I was like, why don't I just sit down and see if other people come in? Well, no one friggin came in! Like, I'm sitting there eating my lunch, and like, no one's really utilizing this cafeteria. A number of people came in and picked stuff up and took it back to their desks to eat there. And so I'm kind of eating my food, and then I go back to my desk in the office, and I sort of start talking to people, and it's like, do, do you ever eat lunch in the cafeteria? And it's like, oh no, I usually just eat at my desk. And I'm thinking to myself, like, who wants to just like, stick their face in the corner of their gray windowless cubicle and eat there? Like, it, wouldn't you want to eat with people? And so it was just like, I didn't get it. I didn't get the lack of social environment at that workplace. And 
That workplace was particularly bad, I didn't stay there very long. But by and large, I found that workplaces weren't as social as I had expected them to be. And so right here, you're spending most of your day at work, but unlike the past where I had school and such and I was making friends through there, I wasn't really making friends through my workplace. That was really hard for me. The other thing though, I would come home, and I'm living in this apartment complex, and there's like one building I'm in and there are two neighboring buildings owned by the same landlord, and there really weren't any common areas at all. Now I'm used to, first of all, in my house growing up, we're a family and we have lots of common areas, but second of all, when I was living in dorms, there's all these lounges and common areas where people congregate, and you can just go there to meet the other people in your dorm. Well, in the apartment complex, that didn't really happen. So I really tried to go out of my way to meet the people in my apartment building, and I did. And so I was like knocking on people's doors and stuff. I mean, this is kind of outside the bounds of people's behavior. People weren't doing this for me, but like, I really wanted to meet my neighbors. And I would bake things and offer them to my neighbors, and there was a little bit of a sense of community in this building. Like, several of us got to know each other, and in the few warm months, there's not much warm weather in Northeast Ohio, in the few warm months, we would sit outside in the patio and have cookouts and things like that. But by and large, that kind of thing didn't happen enough to keep me going. It was like, I remember having maybe three or four cookouts in the year that I lived there, and most of the time it was just me coming home to my apartment alone, and if I was hanging out with friends, they were friends that I brought in from elsewhere. And so like, that living arrangement just didn't make sense to me, I didn't understand it. Like, wouldn't other people want to live in a place that had a common area and that made it easier to meet your neighbors? I really like meeting my neighbors. Okay, so that's the next thing. But <laughs> it gets worse. I'm a pretty resilient person, I keep trying, so I was still not feeling connected socially, I'm not getting it at work, I'm not getting it in my living situation, well, what do I do? I put myself out there, and I start going out a lot to the different businesses on the, the little strip that I lived in. And I also started seeking out other activities elsewhere in the city. And by and large, I just found it really freaking hard. It wasn't like in college. In college, everything, everyone seemed so friendly, like you could just approach random people and start talking to them, and I was like kind of shocked that in the real world you can't do that. Like you go into a bar, you go into a cafe, most of the people seem to want to be left alone, or they only want to associate with the people who they came with. And it's, it's a kind of normal thing, like people go to a bar, people go to a cafe with their group of friends, or like with one or two friends, and they just associate with each other. And like, I kept thinking to myself, wouldn't there be spaces out there where people go when they want to really meet and connect with people? And there were those spaces, and I eventually found them, but they were really, really hard to find. So for example, I found the swing dancing scene in Cleveland, that was really awesome, and I found there were certain cafes and establishments, it, it turned out that none of them were the ones right next to where I lived, which was annoying, but there were ones out there where they had more of this vibe, meeting, meeting people and connecting with the community. And I found there are other tricks too, like, uh, in a cafe, it might be hard to just talk to strangers, but if you get to know the people who work behind the counter, sometimes there can be this little mini culture community that builds up around the regulars, and that can be a really great way to meet people. But it was hard, and it, it, I had to learn these specific skills and techniques. They didn't come naturally to me, no one taught them to me, this was me figuring it out by trial and error, and I spent months and months where I had many really lonely nights, and the times when I wasn't working full time I would have lonely days too, and it, it, it was really hard on me. I became very depressed. Those were the three years between college and grad school were probably some of the hardest times of my life, and I think they were kind of emotionally scarring me, emotionally damaging. So I really hope that no one else goes through this. Unfortunately, I know from talking to a number of other people that some other people do too. 
So what can we do about this? Um, I think in hindsight there were a lot of things that I could have done to prevent falling into this sort of rut. One of them is not living alone, choosing to live with roommates. That's a really great thing. Another thing is knowing the specific methods of how to connect with people. So for example, um, I just sort of assumed that it was going to be easy to meet people out in the world. And I think in hindsight, if I had known that you can go to an establishment on a regular basis, get to know the people who work there, that that's a better method for connecting with people. That it's sort of hard to just randomly strike up conversations with strangers, and also that activity-centered stuff is often a good way to meet people. Um, but even there, like, I kind of knew that a little bit, and that didn't really help me. One last thing that I think would have been helpful for me, when I got out of college, I sort of had this uppity attitude of like, oh, I'm done with college, I want to move on to the next part of my life. Well, over time I realized that university campuses are a happening place, and they're a focus of community. And I think when I was right out of college, I was like, I want to stay away from colleges and universities. I think that was a mistake. Now I'm much older, and I specifically chose to live in a college town because it has a great sense of community. It has more community spaces, and even the people who aren't associated with the university seem to connect more readily. Like, it seems to attract a certain type of people that I relate to. There are a lot of international people. Basically, if I could give myself advice, it would be don't shy away from universities. Maybe move right next to a university right when you're out of college, even if it's not the one that you went to. Um, so that's a, the last thing. That's the things that I could have done. I think there are things other people could have done, though, to help me. And I think the first would be to give me advice, and give me a heads up. No one gave me a heads up about how isolating it was going to be right out of college. I was completely unprepared for it. Th like, just no anticipation whatsoever. So like, it hit me really, really hard. It was the hardest long-term challenge I've ever dealt with in my life, and I still feel like from time to time I struggle with isolation. Uh, thankfully I'm mostly past that, but like, that it's been the biggest struggle of my adult, adult life. So, so having people give me a little heads up about that, that would have been nice. The last thing, there are things we can do as a society to prevent this kind of thing, and there are a lot of different things we can do. I think having a more open attitude to people is really important. Um, trying to get to know your neighbors. Um, basically, everyone can make little decisions to make this stuff easier. People who design buildings, who renovate buildings, build them with freaking community spaces. Don't build these little units that are all like locked away in rooms and then no common area. Freaking ridiculous. Build nice common areas when you build apartment buildings. Um, and when you're a business, think about creating a community space. Like if you're a cafe, it's like have different types of tables. Have some where it is more like communally oriented and it makes the, the physical layout of the seating makes it easier to talk to people. Uh, I love places where they're like, they're more private tables and then there's like a cozy area with sofas and then there like is a little bar that you can sit at. I love that kind of thing. And I found that areas, businesses that have that kind of diversity of seating are better places to meet people. So there are things that everyone can do. Um, basically, that's what I have to say. Uh, I'm doing pretty well now, but I wish I hadn't gone through that. So anything I can do to help other people not have that experience, I'm all about that. Yeah, thank you.